Well, in my case, uh, it was my chemistry teacher at high school uh, who was incredibly enthusiastic. I was interested in science, period. But, and then that changed to biochemistry at university. Well, I've always liked puzzles, and I do crossword puzzles. I continue to. I'm not very good at it, but uh, science is really solving puzzles, and I continue to do it. And you can, you can do it for a job, and I can't imagine what would be more fun. Satisfy your curiosity. It's great fun. Well, in my case, it was <coughs> studying position effect variegation in Drosophila. When I first saw eyes of flies that showed these clonal patterns on them, I thought that was really amazing. Uh, these were discovered in the 1920s, and that was the original description of, of the epigenetic effect. And I got into that when I was a postdoc and never stopped. I was very much interested in gene regulation and chromatin obviously is part of that and very much like Steve just says we got into position effect variegation. Sometimes genes on, sometimes it's off. And that, the rest uh, is epigenetics. Well it's changed enormously. I, I remember very much the days where Chromatin meetings were, you know, basically listings of, of almost histones and a few other proteins, and not much was happening. <clears throat> then when it started to, you know, with new technology and combining with other fields, it became very much a different field and very dynamic, in fact. So it's changed enormously over the years um, to um, a very hot field, very interesting. You can see that in, in the meetings. So I remember the original transcription meetings didn't have any chromatin in them, and then there was a yeah. session on chromatin, usually at the end when people are leaving the meeting and <laughs> not there, and then it got moved up, and then eventually became the first session in the meeting, and then eventually became chromatin and transcription, and then, you know, then we have, like what we have today, where really transcription is just, just one part of the overall chromatin meeting. So. It's changed, uh, it's changed tremendously, and you can see that in the kinds of meetings that are being developed. It's affecting you know, process of replication, DNA repair, how do you maintain this? It's got to do with development, difference, everything. I mean, it affects all processes. I mean, stem cells, in fact, are epigenetically defined. And we don't know how that happens. So I said, you know, from a personal point of view, I'm, I'm very interested in how interactions take place between different parts of, of the chromatin and what the dynamics are of those interactions. And uh, if possible, I'd like to visualize it so you could actually follow what happens in time. And, uh, you know, in a sense, uh, seeing is believing. And so I think that would be uh, the great jump forward. It needs some technical improvements to get there, but I think it will happen. Well, I think the biggest questions are still out there. For example, how is epigenetic inheritance transmitted? Just the kind of thing that got me into this, seeing fly eyes where there's clones. We don't really understand that. I'd also like to know what the interaction is between transcription and nucleosomes. This is something that we're, we're working on ourselves. and then. And then I'd like to understand the, um, particularly our interest has been histone variants, and histone variants have, are very interesting from the point of view they're not all that complex, they're not all that many of them, and, they, and there's different functions, but they're the, they're the basic level of chromatin, the first level of chromatin, because it's what the DNA wraps around. And so we, we have many questions there, too many to actually list. Well, originally the, you know, starting up the journal came out of a European network, uh, which I was part of, called Epigenetics. <clears throat> and uh, there was a feeling that there wasn't a good, high-quality journal for epigenetics research. And so the idea to start such a journal came basically from that network. I agreed to do it, asked Steve to uh, do it with me, and uh, that's how it started. Yes, and I was attracted by the 
need for a journal that was really devoted to chromatin because I felt it was a growing area and it wasn't really getting the exposure that it needed. And combining it with epigenetics, I thought, was just the right, just the right way to go. Well, I think in general, open access publishing is a good thing. Um, and, uh, you know, whether that's true for epigenetics and chromatin, as would be for many other journals. And, um, you know, they've been quite successful so far. And what you've seen, of course, on the side of the established journals is they're actually moving towards open more and more. And so uh, you know, it's all about accessibility if you want to successfully publish, I suppose. And I also think that if you look at the situation right now where there's so much open access, people come to expect it. So, for example, if I look at a paper that, let's say, NAR, which, is, which has been open access for several years, but not before, I get an NAR paper before I can't find it. I have to go to the library. Thing. But everything now is, is online, and it really puts a crimp in your ability to, to find papers. And I think most, a lot of people don't get over that kind of inertia and no longer go to the library. They basically get everything online. So as a result, some of the older literature is, is harder to get and people aren't reading it, and that's kind of a shame. So taking the longer view, I think it's, it, it was an inevitable development with going online, but it also is something that, that uh, we're, we'll just come to expect. It means we've all gained a little bit of weight because we don't have to walk to the library. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>